Hey, I'm Sean Patrick Williams, and I'm here on the Las Vegas Strip. And we're out here uh, on a Tuesday night. Uh, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Blind, about a series we've been doing called Blind, a biblical perspective of purity. And so we're just out here randomly, we just got through eating dinner, we're randomly walking on the strip and just trying to get a snapshot on how uh, pornography, how uh, sexual impurity is affecting our nation, how it's affecting us as an individual, um, and just talk a little bit about some of the things. You know, we've been out here and they have, um, uh, any, everywhere you go, you're seeing immorality, sexual impurity. Uh, they've got Hispanic people out here thumping, and you can see behind me down here on the ground, there's cards laying everywhere. These are cards that are, are they're naked women essentially, and they, these guys, these Hispanic guys, get, give them out to you with a phone number on it, and you can look and see on, on the back of their shirts over here, it says it has a phone number, call, 20 minutes, we'll have a girl come to you. So the, the, the widespread um, effect that it's having here on this, this particular area is really going perfect with the topics of blind. We're teaching this as a series and several churches in different areas, and I think this is essential for uh, us to take a really hard look and an honest look as a nation, as a church, how it's affecting us. The fact is, four out of 10 pastors struggle with pornography, 50% of Christian homes struggle with it. Um, the more money spent, on pornography than all of the NBA, NFL, and Major League Baseball in America all combined. So this is a real issue we want to tackle and hopefully we'll get some um, interviews right off the street and find out what other people are saying about how this is affecting them. What do you do out here in Vegas? Uh, I'm a VIP host. VIP host, and so what does all of that entail? Um, I provide anything for my clients they need when they come to Vegas, excluding drugs and airfare. Excluding <laughs> drugs and airfare. <laughs> and prostitution. Okay, I and prostitution. Do I don't okay. have to do none of that. Tell us about the like the laws and the loopholes of that here in Vegas. Um, well, first of all, it's not legal at all. Okay. Okay, prostitution is not legal at all. Right. Only where it is legal is in Pahrump. Okay. Um, here in, the, in, here in the city limits of Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, prostitutes are legal. They're constantly, they literally have a, a bus that's sitting out here nightly for just the prostitutes. So the they'll bus you out where the prostitutes are? Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. all right, all right. Uh, but now, on the flip side of that, I'm seeing shirts, and it says you dial this number, and we'll have a girl in well, 20 minutes. Well, it's not. that's not for prostitution. Okay. It's actually just for uh, dancers. Dan to your room, uh -huh. shows in your room. Your shows in your Escorts room. Escorts to your room, but they're not. Okay. The nighttime entertainment, but it's, it's just like instead of going to a strip club, you can get it privately for I your guess room. It, I guess. I they're guess. not actually soliciting prostitution. Not, okay, but it's like a personal strip show. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So um, and so this is so you you do all kinds of things, whether it be tours, setting up tours, but also taking people to strip clubs or things. Tell us about your clientele. Uh, my clientele ranges from anywhere from multi-millionaires uh -huh. to guys that just have a couple thousand dollars to spend in Vegas. Right, right. Just coming out here, hanging out. Just coming out to have a good time. And so would you say that they're single, family, dads, they're all um, different wavelengths? Wa all different wavelengths. Uh -huh. uh, you have from fathers, husbands, uh -huh. you know, divorcees to single guys. Right, right, right. Uh, we even take women to the strip clubs. Okay. Regular right. women. Yeah. And, you know, absolutely, actually phenomenally gorgeous women. Right, yeah. Want to go to strip clubs. They'd rather actually believe not to go see the women than to go see the men. Right, right, right. To right. go see the male review. They're I got really, you. you know. Yeah, I got you. Uh, so, so how would you say that, uh, so what, what kind of, what kind of uh, portion of the industry would you say would have out here in Vegas is tied directly or indirectly to something with what would be something sexual? Well, believe it or not, it's all tied in together. All tied in it's together. It's all tied in together. Yeah, yeah, From yeah. the gambling, to the drinking, to yeah. the strip clubs, to the nightclubs, everything is, this is like a, uh, a mud hole for just full of sperm cells <laughs> for some reason. You know, it's like everybody just, you know, because everybody comes to Vegas, yeah. like, you know, they all just want to hook up for some reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, and I whether you go to a nightclub and you, you meet a girl 
and they just want to have, they just want to come to Vegas just to get laid. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I believe me, there's girls that will tell me that. Yeah. There's girls that have have told me that. Yeah. Um, you know, I've come encountered with a couple of myself. <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs> right, right, That's right. how it is. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. And they're regular girls. They're not prostitutes. And yeah. first of all, I don't pay for pussy. Right, I'll right. Excuse my friends, but I just don't. Okay, 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 I got you. That's not my cup of tea. Right. right? I, I, I have too much class even to I got be you. bothered with stuff like that. Got you. Um, you know, but there's people that come to Vegas that, yeah, they want to do stuff like that. Right, right. right. They figure it, this is Sin City. They, they come out here to have fun. Uh huh. Enjoy themselves. Right. Um, you know, and this is just, and then they figure they come to Vegas. Like, you won't find this in New York. You won't find what right. you find here in Vegas in mm -hmm. New York. Right. I mean, it's there, but it's not as It's not open. like this, right. It's nothing like this. Right. Um, like, when I go back to New York, I'm leaving here on Friday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a whole new culture shock for me again. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to be used to seeing the casinos, you know, seeing the gambling and drinking and all this stuff going on. Uh -huh. And now when I go to New York, I mean, yeah, it's there, but it's not as open as this like you're not gonna see people walking up down the street with drinks in their hand you're right okay it, right. Uh -huh. um, it's a whole different ball game out there mm -hmm. so now when you go there you're like you know when people go home to when people come out here they come out here and start acting a fool mm -hmm. believe it or not we get it all the time mm -hmm. but when they go you know when they go back home they're back to normal again so what happens in vegas pretty much stays in vegas, stays in vegas. do you believe that now <laughs> no i don't <laughs> right. believe not you know I, I look at it this way if, if, you know, people do, when you come to Vegas, I, I look at the individuals as, you know, I read a book by its cover. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. And I look at how you act. Okay. If you act retarded here, then that's pretty much how you act anyway. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, yeah, you come out here, you're supposed to come out here to have fun, enjoy yourself, but people just go over the top here. And then that kind of just gives me an idea of how you really are in your persona. Right. Okay. That's just who you are naturally. Um, and I'm just one that, okay, you do what you do, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I just leave it at that. Yeah. I don't, I don't I'm not going to judge you any further than what it is. I'm just going to let it be if you are who you are. Yeah. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? And we deal with so many different types of attitudes out here. Mm -hmm. that it's unbelievable. The one thing that really irritates me the most is when somebody raises their hand like, Orientals have bad hat doing that. <laughs> raising their hand, throwing it up in your face like, you know, you know you're beneath me. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And I look at it like, okay, this guy just put his hand in my face. That's an insult. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to do that to you. Right. You know, I don't do that to anybody. I, I don't I don't put a point at you. I don't put hands at you. None of that. Mm -hmm. People just have a habit of just coming out here and being rude, too. Right. Okay. You come to Vegas to have fun, to enjoy yourself. Yes. Um, you know, whatever you get involved with, whatever you get involved with, then... That's on you, you know what I mean? That, that's up to your discretion, whatever you want to do, that's on you. Yeah. I can help you out getting things accomplished here in Vegas, uh -huh. but I want you to come here in Vegas and have fun and enjoy yourself. That's what, that's what my goal is. I want to, um, now, I want to I wanna share something with you quickly that, um, you know, I, I, I would actually, my first job, my actually my third job was uh, head, head, head bouncer at a stripper at a strip club in Athens, Georgia. And uh, I went on, I got saved and, and I gave my life to Christ and uh, 25 years old, Atlanta, Georgia, at a rave night, a nightclub, I had an encounter with the Lord. And one of the things I want to share with you it, quickly, as you've been talking, I've been listening, man, I want, I want to share with you that I, I really feel like the Holy Spirit is saying that you have, you've seen a lot of things in your life, bro. Oh, yeah. You've seen a lot of things in your life and you see some hard things oh, yeah. and it shaped your view. It shaped the, your view, your perspective of life. And you've seen some things where you, there's like a hard shell of, 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 you've had to put barriers up because of the things that you've seen. Of course. Man, I'm telling you, listen, when you step your foot back to New York, you're going to have a series of events and you've got divine appointments and encounters. God's got a plan for you and he's going to take all the failures, tragedies and victories and he's going to put them together. And when you get back, man, I'm telling you, you're about to have an encounter with the most high God. He's going to arrange things in your life where you know God is speaking where you know God has still got a plan for your life. And even though sometimes you don't even know what direction you're going yourself, right. God does. And I'm, and I'm here to tell you, bro, that there's giftings and callings inside of you that God put in there from the very foundation of the earth. He wants to use for his purposes. And, and his, he is ordering your footsteps on his time frame for his purpose. Of you're going to have some things happen. You're going to have some things happen. You're going to be like, wow, God. Man, I just want to encourage you, bro. 
Listen. And, and let me tell you something. I'm, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. I always, I've always go to church. I read my Bible. I'm a regular. I'm a, I'm a strong believer in God. Okay. Mm -hmm. My job is my job. Okay. That's it. It is what it is. But my faith is my faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I do believe that God's got a calling for me. Calling. Always. He's always got the calling for me. And He keeps me going day in and day out. Dang. And believe me, the Lord is on my side in this job. Listen, you know? when I'm listening to you talk, I'm hearing the Lord talk about your calling and your purpose. And it's for His kingdom. So whatever's happening in your future here, whatever, however He's ordered your steps, it is because there's a gospel mission behind it. And I'm telling you what, man, there's nothing you can do. Whether right. it's here in New York, you know, just like Jonah, when that calls on, he's going to get to you. can run, but you can't hide kind of like the dog, the bounty hunter, <laughs> That's baby. Right. You know what I'm exactly saying? Right. Hey, man, thank you for your time. Can I no pray problem. for you before yeah, we go? Sure, no problem. Father God, we just come before you now, Lord God. I just thank you for this encounter here for my, my brother. God, I pray. God, he's confessed you as Lord. He says he's a believer. Father, I pray for a fresh baptism of your presence in his life. Father, I pray even now, Lord God, that you take and shape those things in his life. Lord, anoint him with fresh oil. Bring a hedge around him. Break the plans and strategies of the enemy. Every demonic stronghold and, and purpose that's been sent out against him, we bind, we refute, we rebuke. Father, I pray now, Lord, for a fresh unction, that prophetic evangelism on his life to come up. Father, I pray, God, that everything around his life that he's doing, God, that is not lining up with your divine purpose, let it crumble, God. And Father, I pray that God, this time in 90 days, he's at a place where he's fully on his way, fully at a place of total surrender in his calling. Father, I believe in divine encounters, and I believe tonight for a fresh indwelling of your spirit. Father, I thank you for your anointing. Bro, I just see, I see God bring a family restoration. You, you need some restoration with your family, bro. Yes. You got to have it. Of course. It's, it, it's coming. Family restoration is happening. God is working it out. I don't know what's going on with your family, but I'm telling you, he's, he's bringing some restoration. Hallelujah. That's awesome. Amen. Jesus. That's awesome. So happy for you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Amen. Appreciate Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Hey, Sean Patrick Williams here talking about the Blind Series here. We're out in Las Vegas and um, out here on the Strip and want to talk a little bit about the addiction. The, the whole point of the series is really talking about sexual purity and the biblical perspective. And in this seg section, we're talking about the addiction of it. And the fact is, you take all of the NBA, the money spent in NBA, all the money spent in the NFL, all the money spent in Major League Baseball and wrap it up into uh, all together and um, did you know that America spends more money on pornography than all of those wrapped together? It is America's number one addiction. The, the fact is that 67% um, of pastors say it's an issue in their church. Four out of ten pastors are addicted to pornography. 50% of all Christian homes say that they've had to deal with pornography or sexual uh, problems in their house. So this is a real issue that uh, America's having to deal with, and it is an addiction, the silence of it. So in this series, we're going to be talking about that. How is it affecting our culture, our society? How is it affecting our churches? How is it affecting us personally? And how is it affecting the things that, that are going on? So we're really encouraged about the. Uh, hope you stay tuned. We're talking to some people on the strip, having some interviews, very interesting perspectives and encounters. So in this section, we'll, we'll hear a little more, so don't go nowhere. Hey, this is Sean Patrick Williams. We're doing a series called Blind. And we've talked about this is a, a purity from a biblical perspective, sexual purity from a biblical perspective. We talked about the addiction. We talked about how it's, uh, this is affecting America as a nation, how it's affecting our church, how it's affecting us as individuals. We talked about what the Bible says, how it affects us and what it, it can do to you. So we, we got that knowledge, but now uh, as we've been out here praying for people, we've got some some really uh, hard reactions and we've got some great reactions. We've been able to pray with people and see some, some awesome things, but we want to talk about the solution now because we know what the Bible says, how the effects come to you, but what is the solution? What does the Bible say is the answer and what can we do to make that change? So.
Hey, Sean Patrick Williams here, The Blind Series. We, we're here in Las Vegas and, and uh, we're talking about sexual immorality through a biblical perspective. We talked about the addiction. We talked about the nature of the addiction. We talked about what the Bible says, how a sexual impurity affects our nation. It affects us as a people. It affects as affecting the church and it's even affecting us as individuals, how it can affect your marriage. And we talked about the consequences of that. Then we got into the solution. And the Bible makes it very clear. We talked about the solution being fleeing youthful lust. There's only one solution, it's to flee. We talked about the, the essence of accountability. And the Bible talks about keeping accountability in your life. So now we get to the point, is the question. And the question really is, now that we know the consequences, and now that we know what the solution is, the question is, will you take the necessary steps to make the change in your life? Will you take a call to action? And will you open up your life for people to speak into your life, to be able to hold you accountable? Accountability is only something that you will allow. The question is, will you take those steps to make that change?